and I had heard a few deals like this dude Jay Z is doing this thing. He's got like, you know, Mary J. Blige, Biggie on his album. I was like, all right, cool, you know, whatever. We had already had Master P. We had people, yeah. but I didn't believe in anybody. Regardless, I'm just a hater. Mm -hmm. I'm in here thinking like, yo, <laughs> Ice Cube, N.W.A. is yeah. that's all I care about. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't believe in Jay. You know, early on, me and Dame grew up in Harlem, so I've known Dame since I was 14 years old, and you know, uh, we had a crew called the Best Out, and we would throw parties all around Harlem, right? And I'm the youngest one, right? I'm at this time, I'm 10th grade. Everybody else out of high school and everything like that, and we all put up $100 one day to throw this party at the Cotton Club. And we had an idea that we was gonna give out 100 bottles of Moet to the first 100 girls that got into the club. So, you know, we, we have this party and the party is crazy. I mean, Mike Tyson ends up coming to the party, pays 1500 to get in the back door. I mean, the party, so afterwards, you know, we had these t-shirts, you know, about, you know, promoting the party and all the girls was like, yo, that was the best out, that was the best out. So the name became the best out and we started doing these events and promoting, you know, just what we was doing. It was about 13, um, 14 guys, it grew to about 18. And we just was all over Harlem, just kind of taking it over. We were, you know, I mean, there was guys at that time that was like OGs and hustlers and stuff like that. We were still like the young kids, but you know, we had so much notoriety. So we just started to see our influence on the other kids in Harlem and what we were doing with our lifestyle and how people gravitated towards it. So a couple years later, Dame actually started managing Future Sound, which led to Original Flavor, and he got a deal with Clark Kent. Uh, so once that happened, Clark actually introduced Dame to Jay. He was like, yo, I know this guy that's dope. Dame act brought him back uptown um, actually to talk, yo, I got this dope dude, I got this dope dude, and then playing some fast rapping songs with Jay, and I'm like, you know, at that time, I mean, this is 94, right, so Snoop is, you know, uh, I mean, there's UGKs, all these other dudes, Scarface and everybody, I'm like, yo, this is part too, yeah. Yeah, I mean, we like, yo, come on, this dude ain't, he's not like these other guys. Um, you know, he brought him uptown, and that's actually uh, how Harlem really started to like Jay, because he came uptown and battled Big L on Big L's block. But everybody in Harlem respected Jay at that moment because he came to his block and, you know, wanted the battle and then kind of laid it down and then everybody was like, yo, this dude is nice. And that's actually how Big L started, you know, rapping and putting words together and doing it more like uh, Jay, like that triple, tripling up on the words. So it wasn't until the, the, the battle with DMX and uh, you know, in the um, in a, in a pool hall, when they, you know they were battling, standing on type of pool tables. Actually, Big Hell taped that. He was the only one video in that. Mm. And when Jay said the, that verse with the money dancing on the ceiling and my money machine, ra -ta 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 I looked at my brother Bob and I was like, now he's saying something. Me, and, you know, we looked at him like, yo, this dude is hot. And it, like everything he was kicking at that moment was more like hustler rhymes. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then I started to hear 95 South. Oh, I started man. to hear, uh, um, what's the other song? Gotta Reach the Top that Clark Kent did. Like songs that Clark was doing that didn't make the album, but that was more uh, street sounding. And he's kind of slowed it down. You know, I can't get with that. I, you know, I started to like that even more. So I kind of came on at that time. And, um, you know, I guess taking like a, a road managing role, but really just some support. You know, so whatever Jay did at that time, it was like, you know, and the unsung heroes, like he talked about Emery, Tata, Beehive, you know, it was us that had, you know, that created that lifestyle and Big Ty. So we would just, wherever Jay would go, wherever he would perform, we would just kind of bring that lifestyle. So we would just come and be like, yo, let's have the after party here. Yo, know, they got a bar buy out the bar. So that was our thing at that time, you know what I'm saying? Putting down ten to twenty thousand dollars and buying out all the champagne. And then champagne became that thing that, you know They were notorious you know, for buying champagne yeah. everywhere. But um I think that's what it was that everybody gravitated towards and why everybody liked reasonable doubt because we were going around and performing and Jay, I mean, his uh, stage presence and what he actually brought Music wise, right? I mean, whether it was, he was performing in front of 10 people or 100, he had everybody standing up. But what we were doing afterwards in that lifestyle, people was like, these guys didn't drop an album yet. 
like how were they living like this? So by the time the album <laughs> came out and they heard the lyrics and it was like, I remember them because we went to every t every town doing the same thing. It was just like, it was validated. So we knew at that time, you know, going back from the best out, that if we did these things and we introduced them to the public, you know, on a level that was aspirational, but it was things that people weren't really on, but it was quality, that that would gravitate towards it. You it know? was a culture and lifestyle yeah. that, they, that they was promoting. Mm -hmm. And then it was a spirit, of, you know, the spirit of independence. So, you know, being turned down uh, so many times, you know, record label, record label, and after even uh, proving ourselves and people still not wanting to give us a deal, just kind of led us to go harder and harder and harder and harder. I remember we had a show in Jacksonville. The nicest hotel they had in Jacksonville was like a two and a half, three star hotel. <laughs> and I'm sitting hot, dying, and it's like, we're sitting chairs, like lawn chairs, I mean, like nice chairs. <laughs> Jay's next to me here wearing a bucket hat, you know, might've been hip hop, it was a few cats. And I remember Jay's like thinking, he's like, yo man, we gotta find me a better hotel, man. You know what I mean? Like, I done done better, you know, better hotels when I was, you know, when I was moving them things. And then I just got a few new tattoos. This all reasonable doubt era. And Jay was like, I can't do no tattoos. I was like, Man, every time something like you gotta like say something bad about me, man. <laughs> and Jay's like, nah, man, just you know, you can't do no crimes, cause you know you gotta tattoo us for life. Back then there was really no laser removal. Yeah. And Jay's like, you can't do no crimes, man. I'm like, man, I ain't trying to do no crimes no more, man. You know, I'm a, you know, I'm a record executive now, you know. And it was just funny. We always had these little small little moments. And Jay went up. Crazy, this is Jacksonville, 1996. You know what I mean? It's like yeah. it was real yeah. country, like yeah. Yeah. southern. Florida, it ain't Miami, you know what I mean? This is like, they're listening to Luke Skywalker still over there, you know? And Jay went out there and he murdered it, you know? And he just did his thing and I was like, wow. I remember, you know, like, I wish I had taken more pictures back then. I take pictures of everything now. I'm not letting, I'm not gonna miss yeah, any yeah. doc. I'm not gonna miss any documentation of legends.